The derivative of function f of x denoted f prime of x is defined here. It's defined as the limit as h goes to zero of the difference quotient. This function here is called the difference quotient. Um, we may uh, interpret this as the slope of the secant line going through the point on the curve at x and x plus h, where h is the distance from one x value to the other. But the definition of the derivative is the limit of this difference quotient as h goes to zero. Now, we're going to use the definition of the derivative to find the derivative of a function. For example, let's think about the square root of the quantity x plus 1. We want to use the definition to find the derivative. Now, before we do that, I want to mention a very special product, and that is the product of two conjugates. A plus B is the conjugate of A minus B. In other words, when we have two numbers, and we have their sum, and then we have their difference, we call those conjugates of one another. And when you multiply two conjugates, when we take A plus B and multiply by A minus B, we get a difference of squares. We get A squared minus B squared. So notice that the two terms, the A and B being the terms, they're being both being squared and, and we are finding their difference. For example, consider 5 plus 2 and its conjugate, would, which would be 5 minus 2. So we have 7. 5 plus 2 is 7. 5 minus 2 is 3. 7 times 3 is 21. Well, notice that if we multiply 5 plus 2 times 5 minus 2, we get 25 minus 4 if we use the difference of square rule from above. 5 squared is 25, 2 squared is 4, and the difference is 21, and as we know, 7 times 3 is 21. Okay, we're going to use that here in a minute, so I just wanted to remind us of the rule that two conjugates give us a difference of squares as the product. Now, what, to remind us, what, going back to what our problem is, oh, here we go, we're trying to find the derivative of this function using the definition. Now, notice in the definition we have the function evaluated at x plus h. Oh, well, here's our function and we want to evaluate it at x plus h. We will do that. The function is input plus 1, but our input here is x plus h, so it's x plus h plus 1. Okay? Now, the derivative calls for the function evaluated at f of x f of x at x plus a, sorry, minus the function. So let's find that. We have here the function evaluated at x plus h, and we're going to subtract from it the function. Well, the function is square root of x plus 1. So notice this is our numerator in the difference quotient. So going back to the problem, we will now finally make some headway. We'll say that the derivative is equal to the limit as h goes to zero of, remember we just found on the scratch paper, this numerator was the square root of x plus h plus one minus the square root of x plus one, and it's all over h. Well, we can't evaluate this limit with a substitution because we have zero in the denominator. So what we will do is use our trick with the conjugates. We will multiply the numerator by the conjugate. Well, if this is our numerator, then the conjugate is the same thing, only put in a plus right here. Now, if we're going to multiply our uh, argument
argument of our limit, we have to multiply it by an expression of 1. So if I multiply the numerator by something, I have to multiply the denominator by the same thing. So I'm really just multiplying this argument of my limit by 1. Something divided by the same thing is 1, and 1 times an expression does not change the expression. So we have, carrying out the multiplication, remember if you multiply something by its conjugate, you get the difference of the squares of the term. So we'll square this term and get x plus h plus 1. We'll square that term and get x plus 1. And then we'll find the difference. Now, whenever you have a polynomial on the subterranean position of subtraction, it's, you need to put the parentheses to indicate that this minus will distribute. And meanwhile, in the denominator, we have h times the numerators, or the former numerators, conjugate. Now, when we distribute this negative, notice that we'll have a negative x minus 1. That means that the numerator simplifies to just h, because this x and that negative x um, add to 0. 1 and negative 1 add to 0. So we have in our numerator just h. And in our denominator, we have h times this weird expression here, which was the conjugate of our former numerator. Now, this is multiplication here, so we see that h will divide into h one time. So, we have simplified our argument of the limit. to 1 over the square root of x plus h plus 1 plus the square root of x plus 1. We can now do direct substitution. Directly substituting the 0 in for the h, we will no longer need this limit symbol. We are going to just put the 0 in and evaluate what that limit is. x plus 0 plus 1 plus square root of x plus 1. Well, notice we have x plus 1 down here because that 0 plus 1 is just 1. So we have 1 over the square root of x plus 1 plus the square root of x plus 1. And whenever you add something to itself, there you get two of them. So we see finally that the derivative is equal to 1 over 2 square roots of x 